listen, it's all different emotions after that, uh, Nick. Um, sometimes performances are, are undefendable, and that was certainly the case in the first 45 minutes. What went wrong, Darren? Why was it it's so poor from your side? Um, the goals we lost were awful. Could have been more, really. Half time came at a good time for us, and I just felt that. Every second ball, every header, every tackle was won by Milton Keynes today, which is most unusual in a game that is for us. But like I say, sometimes I just I have to protect my players, obviously, in, in public. And, and what I would say to them in the dressing room would, has to be slightly different to what I say to you guys, but I can't really defend that first 45 minutes, if I'm going to be honest. Mm. And as you say, that's not about quality particularly, is it? Winning second balls and, and tackles and that kind of thing is just sort of fire from within. So a worry if, if that's lacking in a big game like this. Well, look, I, I think that... Um, the, the, we have got an identity, identity, identity as a football club, Peterborough. In the last eight years, uh, certainly the last seven out of the eight, we've, we've had a really successful sort of story. And we're just not at that level at the moment. Um, of course, I say it again, and everyone would look at the manager and he has to take responsibility. Of course, that's the case. But when you come to a game like this, the magnitude of this game, what it means, I mean, if we had. If we'd performed like our fans today, we would have won the game comfortably. Our fans were absolutely magnificent, and we'd, I do owe them an apology. There's no question about that. There. As a group, we owe them an apology, because that, that's not acceptable for them. They, they're used to better days than that, and of course, we want to get better days than what we had today, and we want to get back to where we were. But we have to apologise to our supporters, because at the second half, I thought they were absolutely outstanding. How do you get back to, to where you were, Darren? Is it, is it a, a big job, um, and a, a job that's going to take a, a bit of time? I would have to say it's a big job, yeah. I, I, I definitely would, would say that it's a big job, this. Uh, but it's one I, I want to do. It's one I, I'm enthusiastic as, as the day I walked in to do, but you know, you can't always be successful, but you have to look at the bigger picture. And you know what? Sometimes, as a manager, you've got to put on different faces. You've got to really rein your sort of your own personality in because that's that's part of your job. That's that's the day and age of footballers. You've got to be careful with them. But not today. The players got the truth today. Exactly what I felt. Like. You're obviously furious after what, 34 minutes or so to make two early changes, Oztimmer and, and Smith off. Uh, was that clearly to just give the team a kick up the backside? It could have been all of them. You know, I could only make three. If I could have made more, I would have. But it just wasn't acceptable the first half. And uh, I want to I move Bozzi right back. Uh, and. I, and you know, as much as I, I like him as a player, he had one shot at goal, and, and he didn't influence the game as I wanted. And that's why you know he was going back. And I can't just blame. Listen, he's unfortunate. I have to say he's on. The both players in that sort of performance, the ones that come off are, are, are unlucky in the sense that it could have been any one of them. And I have to make a decision. Second half we were better, but that was always going to be happening because we couldn't be any worse. For someone like Erhan, is it a risk taking him off early on in a game like that in terms of his, his confidence going forward? No, because I have to deal with him now in terms of how I manage him. Uh, you know, I'm not going to ignore him. I've got to explain why I did what I did. But um, I've got to make decisions, and today I had to make decisions very quickly. So we put Sean back to centre-half, was he at right back? And Marcus obviously replaced Erhan. And I wanted to make another substitution at half-time, but I thought... I can't make it then because if we get an injury, we're, we're down to ten men. So I waited a little bit and we went to a different formation. Yeah, but you know, like, like I said at the start of the interview, I, I can't defend that performance. A change of formation um, before the game today was that having seen an improvement in the second half at, at Bristol City when you changed it? No, it's a formation that works really well against Milton Keynes. Always has done. Um, Diamond, press them. You can press them. Two strikers that wanted to press. Um, quality of the goals we lost were awful and then the three chances, decent chances we get in the second half, we don't hit the target but um, you have to give cre credit to Milton Keynes as well because first half they were, I think we made it easier for them but they were good. You did create two great chances mm. didn't you, particularly Norris's what, couple of minutes into the second half and, and you score that and you, you're back in the game but it's that clinical edge that you, you're lacking, we keep saying it. Yeah we are You know that, that's perhaps the difference not, not in terms of how the game went in the first half but certainly in they, they, they scored from their chances, I know they had more. We had two very, very good chances for a game like this. We missed the target on both, and Marcus, I felt, could have put John in. If he's not going to do that, he's got to hit the target, and then David's opportunity, like you say, after half-time. Really disappointing day. As far as these games go, this is, this is the worst one we've had against this lot. 
Mm. Realistically, Darren, are you thinking now about next season and how you put together a team capable of, of challenging next season? Because I know the playoffs in terms of points aren't too far away, but it's going to take a big job because there's big, tough games coming up. Uh, it's, a tr it's a hard question. A difficult. It's a good question on your behalf, but it's a difficult one. Um, look, I think that the, the, the consistency has not been there. Well, we've got 14 games to go. I think that you look at the league and you say, look, 41 points. It's not. It's not enough. It, that's that's for a reason. The, the stats are there for a reason. So we have to try and get as many points as we can and see what it takes us. Um, but the players now know exactly what I think of them in terms of the truth came out today. I know you've been working hard to to add reinforcements. Um, couldn't get anyone in for today, but could be, business be done? Do you think next week? Well, we've been trying for a couple of weeks now to get bodies in and. But listen, we've got to take responsibility. We, I can't just keep going, phoning my chairman up and saying I want him, him, and him. He, he's been the most supportive chairman anyone could have as a manager, you know. And it's not this is not his responsibility, you know. And and, and the players get looked after really well at our club. And um, today's today's a, a bit a bit of disappointment for me. Mm -hmm. oh, this will hurt the chairman, won't it? It'll be a painful yeah. one for him. It hurts us all. Well, it should hurt us all. But when you've got you know, you've been in, we've had a great, it is a good rivalry we've got with Milton Keynes. But you know what, we've had good days against them. We've got to come up in today. Newell missing today, I assume that's that groin problem. Could he be fitting back for Bradford? You would have thought so. He just did it a little a bit again yesterday. He had a fitness test this morning, but he was clearly not going to make, make 100%. So Cosy came in, uh, the other changes were, were all um, ones that I've decided to make for this game.